Hello, people. As you know, or may not know, I've shared a little on Instagram, but we've had a lot going on. But I just want to say that our trip is coming up very soon to Germany. And I'm kind of scrambling right now, trying to get everything done and trying to, like, purchase all of the things that I need because we live in the South and we're going somewhere very cold. So, um, I have to get some things that I... I don't have so coats coats are a big thing whenever we moved here from Missouri I got rid of it all <laughs> I don't have any more so I had to get a few I ordered some from Nordstrom they came in I was not intending on keeping them all but now I have to and I'll get into that in a little while but I ordered some coats I ordered some boots some waterproof boots and then what else did I get like the European adapters and all of that. I guess I need to get on Pinterest or Google or something and just like Google, what do you take to Europe in the winter? Because I'm kind of clueless. I have no idea. I have been overseas one time. I've been to Europe once and that was back in 2006. So it's it's been some time. So yeah, I kind of need your help. So if you guys have ever been to Europe, if you live somewhere where it's very, very cold, please comment below and give me some suggestions of things that I might need or things that could be helpful over in Europe. We're going to Germany. We're going to see Tim. I don't exactly know what we're going to do. We don't necessarily have an agenda because we are taking my daughter. She's three. So we're going to kind of just play it by ear. So I wanted to just show you the coats that I got and the things that I have so far so that you guys can let me know what I'm missing and just give me your thoughts on these things. Let me just show you the first thing. I'm wearing this lovely green Sherpa long coat. It goes a little bit past my knees. Let me just turn you around. Please forgive the mess because I've got things. Just, there's stuff everywhere. Our house is a mess right now. Between getting Christmas out, the trips, we had the Disney trip, which I still have not unpacked from. This is Story's suitcase and now I've got all of her European outfits like over here so I don't forget them. I've just, I got stuff everywhere. But here's the first coat. Now, if you follow us on Instagram, you may have seen me put on a coat in my stories that was very similar to this, but it was like a dark brown or like a caramel, like a dark rich amber color. I liked it, but one of my good friends made a, a comment that really, and I don't, I'm not upset with her. It didn't offend me or make me feel any kind of way, but it made me realize that she wasn't wrong. So she made a comment like, it looks like the uh, Macklemore coat in the music video. I think it's like, what is it? Pop, I'm gonna pop some tags or whatever that is from like five or six years ago. It, it looked exactly like it. And so I was like, oh, I, that's all I see now when I look at it. And I don't want to be Macklemore in Europe. So they had different colorways on Amazon. And so I returned that one and I got the green one, which I like. And I think that it's great for Christmas time and everything. But I am now starting to get the like shag carpet vibe from it. So, or, or like Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm, I'm into this trend, this Sherpa coat trend this winter. I do like it. I don't know. I just, I think it's really cute on other people. And then I put stuff like this on and I'm like, mm. I just don't know if this is me. So I am on the fence with this one. A couple things about it. It's got a side seam pocket on each side. I do not like side seam pockets because it makes you look wider and I'm a curvier person. So I don't like to look straight and wide. Um, and that's what these pockets do. This is also more of a lightweight coat. This is not necessarily something that I'm going to depend on to keep me warm if we're outside for a long time. But if we're doing a, like some shopping or getting in and out of cars or, or wh whatever, we're going to be riding it, I don't know. But if we're like in and out a lot or just doing something casual, I don't know. I feel like this would be a good layering coat because I could wear something thinner, maybe not necessarily a thick sweater like I have on right now, but like a thinner top and then this over it. It also does not have any closures. It doesn't have a zipper or buttons. So it's more like just like a lounge coat. Like I said, on the fence. Let me know in the comments what you think. All right, along the same lines as like the casual lounge coat, lounge whatever whatever you want to officially call this. This is something that I got from Nordstrom. It is very lightweight, very soft and very comfortable and it has a fair amount of stretch to it. And it's got pockets on the front panel, which I enjoy and appreciate. It's not way back here. I'm not reaching behind my back to put something in my pocket. It's just like very comfortably right here. 
I like this. I like the color. I am pretty short. I'm, I don't even know. I'm between 5'3 and 5'4. I feel like I'm shrinking. I used to be a solid 5'4, but from what I recall, I have started to shrink and I'm like 5'3 and something now. But I do like this. I like the slits too. This is really nice because it's not so tubular. It's got a little bit of, you know, again, it's not meant to keep me warm if we're outside for a long time or anything like that. But I don't just want to bring one real big winter coat and then, you know, get over there and they have like a 50 degree day, like unseasonably warm day or something like that. And then just like get stuck carrying this big heavy coat. So I, I need to, I feel like I need to have options. So I could wear, I, I have this chunky sweater on underneath it, which doesn't look terrible to me. I don't really like the color with this. It's not the worst but the thickness of it, I could probably handle this. And then maybe like a scarf or something. I don't know. Is that going to be something comfortable to wear walking around Europe? I don't know. Can I wear this and feel comfortable and eat a baguette and eat a soft pretzel and drink a beer? Absolutely. And then we have number three. The Eskimo coat, as I like to call it. <laughs> it's huge. It's not, it's not huge. It's warm. It's down filled. It's got pockets everywhere. So there's these right here on the front panel. And then they've got these zipper ones right here also. Both sides, which I love. This really, really nice thick fur hood. So if it's windy, if we're out there skiing on the Alps or anything, we'll be will be good. It's got a zipper and some snaps. This one is super comfortable, super warm. This is the coat that I feel like is going to be perfect for Christmas markets. If we go somewhere and they have an outdoor Christmas market and we're going to be out there for hours, this is what I intend on wearing. It's like a berry red color, Christmassy. It's warm and cozy. I can wear my boots with it. I can wear pretty much anything I want underneath depending on what the temperature is going to be or if the sun's up or down. I love this. Am I going to wear it a lot when we are back home here? Probably not. But I feel like I need to at least hang on to a coat or two instead of getting rid of them all like I should not have done. Um, it is, again, from Nordstrom. This is by Larry Levine. It's water repellent as well, so if it does drizzle, if it rains or anything like that, we should be good. They call this rust. I would not call this rust. I would call this like berry. Like it's berry red. It's a deep Christmassy mold wine red. Uh, I don't know if you can tell or if this comes up on camera, but do you see these? Let's see. Can you see that? Can you see these dark spots right here? Let me tell you about that. Like I mentioned, I ordered a bunch of these coats from Nordstrom. We don't have a Nordstrom here in Charleston. There's a Nordstrom rack, but we don't have like a Nordstrom like department store. So I really liked shopping there when we lived in St. Louis and I thought, well, I'm gonna, maybe I'll order some from there and then I can just ship back the ones that I don't want, whatever. They had a really good sale going on. I couldn't tell you what it, what the sale was. This was months ago when I got these. So it was a pretty good deal because it was very off season. So all that to say, I got the box in the mail. It came to our house. I opened it up in the kitchen, which was my first mistake, but I was really excited when they got here because I wanted to see them. I opened it up in the kitchen and then I was trying them on one by one and then like looking in the bathroom, the half bathroom we have downstairs. And then I would put them back in the box and then it was dinner time. So I pushed the box up against the counter, like the island or whatever you want to call the thing that jets out in the kitchen. I pushed the box up against that. That's my second mistake. I guess you could say I, the real mistake was that I left the top open on the box and you can see where this is going. So we had our dinner, story was finished and she was walking her plate over to the counter. She put her plate on the counter. Something happened, I don't know what, she's a toddler and the plate fell into the box of coats. And this is the one that was laying right on top. We just so happened to be having like a, it was a summer squash pizza or something like that that I had made so it had minced garlic and like oily olive oil covered squash and pieces of just all kinds of stuff and it fell all over the coat it, it's on there and there was like pieces of garlic in the fur 
of this thing, it was, <laughs> it was a disaster. And it got on every single coat. It wasn't just this one. This one was the worst. Um, but the other ones got in on there too. So I'm like, well, guess I'm not returning these because I can't exactly wash this coat and then take it back. And I can't get this out without washing it. So now I have a bunch of coats to pick from, but that's the story. It was kind of a, kind of a disaster. Okay, next coat. This one, again, very soft, very warm. I don't know if this is, is this down in here? What does it say? Animal friendly, hypoallergenic, superior warmth, soft and lightweight, washer and dryer safe, water resistant and odorless. Okay. 100% recycled plastic bottles. Oh, the insulation is made from recycled plastic bottles. That's pretty cool. I didn't read these tags when they came in the mail. So it's not down, which is nice. I wish all the garlic and oily squash would have fallen on this one because this would have been probably better in the washer and dryer. But it's fine. Things I like about this. It is also comfortable. I really like the color of this one. It's a very neutral pink. It is great for the south because I feel like this could be a winter or a spring coat. The hood is very nice. It stays up pretty easily. It's got front panel pockets that have zippers, which I really enjoy. And then it's also got a second zipper on the inside. So if you don't want to be so like constricted, whatever, you can unzip that one. And then it also has this zipper. Can you see this right here? You can unzip this and basically take out this entire section which is the collar, like the inner collar. So if you want this to be more of a lightweight jacket, you can just take that part off and then you just have less to deal with. It's less bulky, I guess. I like it both ways. I'll probably wear it with this in it in Germany. And then when we come back home, I'll take this off because I probably won't need so much. It's a shorter length, which is nice again for a shorter person. It also came with a baggie. So this is more of the, um, what you would call the packable style of coat. And it comes with this bag so you can roll it up and put it in here. So it takes up less space in your luggage, which is a huge perk and a reason why this might be the one that I take. Oh, see, I don't know. I really want the red one because we're going at Christmas time and that's perfect. Maybe I'll wear the red one on the plane and pack this one in the suitcase if I have room. I don't know. We're going to have to figure this out. But the brand, again, is Bernardo Fashions, also from Nordstrom. I really like it. Real quick, though, I wanted to show you my shoes that I got. These are going to be my travel clogs. These are from J. Crew. I got them during the 40% off friends and family sale, but they are suede and then they're lined with Sherpa. They've got a really solid sole, so I feel like these will be good walking around the airport. And then if we have to take your shoes off through security, like they're easy. I think that these are going to be really nice for traveling. Now, the boots that I ended up going with are these Ugg Adirondack boots. This is not the first choice that I had. This is not the ones that I initially bought. The first ones that I went with were from Sorel. It was the, I think it was called Joan of Arc, if I remember correctly. And they were a taller boot. It went up half of your calf. But... I have always had issues with boots fitting my calf. I'm sure a lot of people have this problem, but boots just don't fit my calf very well. So my second option was to go with these Uggs. This was another, I, I googled like top 10, um, what did I actually google? Top 10 best winter boots for women in 2021 or something along those lines. And so that's the list I went off of. The Sorel boots were the number one. Again, cute, but it wasn't going to work for me. The Uggs, were also on the list. I want to say these were like the third from the top of the list. So pretty up there. These are also waterproof. It's a waterproof leather. And then they're lined heavily with this Sherpa. Oh my goodness. I can walk comfortably. They actually have inserts too. I don't know if I can get this out with one hand. Yes, I can. Maybe. But they have this. Oh, it's very fuzzy. But they have this insert that you could take out if you needed to, to make it less fuzzy or less bulky but I like to keep it in there because I like my feet to be real cozy and warm and snug but I don't have an issue getting these on and off they're very easy to wear I've already worn these several times around here 
and Charleston, and they're great. They lace up, they stay laced up. They're like not too terribly heavy. They have this hoop on the back. So when I'm like getting them on, I can just put my finger in here and just pull it up on my heel. I really like that. I'm going to have these probably for a decade because they're really, really well made. We'll see how they hold up in Germany. I've got a bunch of sweaters too. Do you guys want to see the sweaters I have? This is my sweater that I got from Amazon. I will link this down below. It has been a long time. I don't know. I don't know what it costs or anything, but I know it had good reviews and I can now confirm it is comfortable. It's not scratchy. I like the faux turtleneck going on. I like the color. I really like it. Amazon is the way to go. If you're going to get clothes that you know you're not going to wear throughout the year or you just need them for like a small season, Amazon. <laughs> because it's cheap, but like some of this stuff is really well made. This is one of them. I have other sweaters too. They're not all from Amazon. I do have some from, uh, like I was telling you, the J. Crew shoes that I got for the friends and family sale. I got a few sweaters from there too. Why don't I just go show you? Here are the sweaters that I have currently that are not in the wash that I can show you. I'm still waiting on a few more too, but here is what I have that I love. And it turns out that I really like neutrals because I'm wearing a cream and I have these khaki colors and then another like creamy one down here so I'm gonna be very neutral because it can go in the winter or the spring. So this is the brand of this one is BP. This is also from that Nordstrom sale when I got the coats I also got this. I got another one in blue which was pretty um, ballsy of me if you will because I didn't know if I was going to like the sweater. I was pretty sure I was going to but I probably shouldn't have gotten two without knowing but as luck would have it I love these. These are probably, I'm not going to say the softest sweaters that I own because the chenille ones are the softest, but if you want a sweater that's not chenille, oh my gosh, I'm going to try to find a link to this and put it in the description. I love these sweaters. Love, love, love them. They are loungy if you want them to be. Put on a pair of leggings or sweatpants with these and they're so comfortable. Or get some nice jeans and some boots layer it with a nice coat or vest. I love these sweaters. So, so cute and comfortable. And then, so the chenille one I was just talking about, right here. This is very, very red. Perfect for Christmas, perfect for Germany. So if you remember, I did a spring try-on video months and months ago, and I had a sweater exactly like this, but it was more of a sage green. And I raved about it. I had the sweater on with some white jeans, I believe. I'll link the video if you haven't seen it. But anyways, I loved that so much that I got another one in red because they had a sale on Amazon. I knew that I liked this one, so I got another one. And then when I got my clogs from J. Crew, I saw these sweaters on sale with these cute little mock necks, like mock neck, mock turtleneck, whatever you want to call these. I like these because it's not too bulky, but it still gives you that same effect. I'm trying to see where the tag is to tell you what it's made of because I'm pretty sure it's some kind of cashmere or a blend. Oh, merino. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah. There's 30% merino wool in here, so I know it's going to keep me warm and 10% alpaca. Let me tell you about an alpaca sweater. I've got one from, I want to say it's free people that I got. Who it had to be decades ago. Let me go get it. I'll show you. Hang on. Why don't I just take you guys in the closet? I mean, the lighting sucks, but yeah. See, look how yellow everything is. Don't judge me. It's a mess. It's Christmas time. This is the sweater that I'm talking about. If I can get it out. Is that free people? Yep. Free people. Now, I'll bring it out here. Again, I like neutral sweaters. <laughs> but do you see how see-through this is? You can see right through this. There's my fingers. But when you're wearing it, this keeps you so, so warm. I can put on like a, just a cami underneath this and I don't need a coat. I kid you not. I get cold easily, but I know if I wear this sweater, I'm not going to be cold. This is the warmest sweater I have. It's the thinnest sweater I have and the warmest, best sweater I, I'm going to, I'm taking this with me. I'm going to have a suitcase full of neutral sweaters. That's what I'm going to have, but I will. My whole point was that there is alpaca in this along with merino wool. So it's so, so buttery soft. It's stretchy. It's got a lot of stretch to it. It's a beautiful emerald green color. Perfect for Christmas. 
is from J. Crew. so get on the website, I'll link it below. Okay, let's talk about these devices because I will admit that I have not really researched what exactly I'm supposed to have, but when you go down the travel aisle at Target, this is what was in it, and they were clearanced. I think this one was, yeah, this one used to be $60, and I got this for $30, and I want to say this was along the same lines, like it was $80, and I got it for like $40 or something something like that. So it was very, very cheap and it looks like it's going to be helpful. And it says it's for a iPhone 8 and above, which I have an iPhone 8, so good. But you can charge your phone on top of it just by like setting it on there. It says it's got a Europe adapter right there, so that's perfect. You can use it for iPad, iPod, and iPhones. Let's hope that this works for me. And if it doesn't, then hopefully this will. But I think this one is more for like a curling iron or a hairdryer. Yeah, high-end electric styling tools. I think I need to do some research. I just, I have this list of things that I need to do. And I was just telling my mom this on the phone this morning. Like every time I get the list out to accomplish something, I'll start doing it and then get sidetracked by something else. And I'll be like, oh, I need to do this. I'll write that on the list. And before I get anything finished, I've added five more things to it and I haven't crossed anything off yet. <laughs> and that's where I'm at right now. We have weeks left until this trip, but it's basically like hours because I know it's going to go by so quick. I have so much to do. Oh my God. <laughs> And then I've got to get story stuff together. I'll show you what I have for her real quick in a second, but so cute. I don't think I mentioned this. We're going to Germany, obviously, and we're going to be there for several days. But we decided that when Tim was doing his Paris video, he was like kind of talking to me about it and everything. And even before he did the video, he was like telling me how close Paris was. And I was like, you know, I don't know how many times I'm going to be in Europe in my life. I'd like to believe that I will get to go again. But what if I don't? And we're going to be so close to Disneyland Paris. So we need to go, right? Like we're going to be right there. I think that I would come home from this trip and regret it if we didn't go. So we're going to Disneyland Paris. And so not only am I thinking about the things that we need to do in Germany, but now I'm like, Whoa, there's so many things in Paris that I want to see. If you don't already know this, I may have mentioned it in another video, but my background is in fashion. I have a, a deep connection with the fashion industry and I spent many years working in the fashion industry and it's always going to have a piece of my heart. And so Paris is the fashion capital of the world. How can I be so close and not go? Right? Like I need to go see, they've got the, the world's biggest Louis Vuitton is over there need to go there and it's Christmas and maybe I can get a little something and then like Disneyland Paris of course I want to do that because we're Disney freaks and so I gotta go I gotta take story the Eiffel Tower need to do that baguettes pastries all the things I need to do these things so I'm rambling again but I'm just my point is that I can't stay focused I can't stay focused on what I need to do and I need to start getting my crap together. If you have any suggestions, if you have traveled to Europe before during the winter time, specifically Germany, let me know if there's something that I don't have that I need. If you live in Germany, is there anybody in Germany out there watching this video? Please let me know what you think that I should bring. Even people from Canada, anybody from Canada out there? Hello, let me know. What do you think I need? Another thing I got story, let me show you real quick just a few things that I got story because that's something else I need to think about is I have a toddler with me so I need to, first and foremost, I need to make sure that she stays warm. Let me just turn you around and I'll show you real quick what I have. Okay, like I said, I've still got her Disney suitcase sitting over here and I, I don't think that I'm going to bring this to Germany. She's just too small. She can't wheel this yet. I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have so much stuff. I'm going to be a pack mule walking through the airport. So this probably isn't going to work. I can't really stack it on top of my suitcase. So I'm probably just going to use our set and put her stuff in a separate one. But this is still over here because everything that we need is in here. I've still got diapers in here, all her toiletries and everything from the Disney trip. I'm just going to transfer it over to new luggage. I've started throwing her outfits up here. Um, we have these cute tights because I picked out some super duper cute Christmas dresses for her. They're by the washer and dryer, so I can't show you that. But this is, I got her some base layers. So this is from Smart Wool. Is there a tag in here? Yeah, Smart Wool, if you have heard of that. Um, it's got, it's made with Merino 250. It's very, very, excuse the cat hair. These are clean, but they look like they're covered in stuff. 
Um, but this is going to keep her warm. When we're outside, if we go to Disneyland Paris, or when we go to Disneyland Paris, and we're outside all day long, she's going to have this on underneath her outfit to keep her warm. I have a long sleeve shirt as well for her, but she wore that to soccer last night, so it's in the wash. I gotta wash it. At least I know she's covered in that sense. And then look at the scoot outfit. Oh my god. Look look it's got little eiffel towers this is from janie and jack and they had a sale i don't know a while ago so i got this for her and then i found a red tulle dress on amazon it's like a spaghetti strap dress but then the skirt is a very fluffy red tulle so i'm gonna let her wear the dress and then she can put this over it how cute is that gonna be oh i cannot wait this is also from janie and jack and i got it on the clearance rack during the summer so it was $64 and then it was marked down to $19.97 and then I got an additional 20% off of that so that's a really good price for something from Janie Jack but I just thought this looked really warm and Parisian and cute it's like a really really nice soft sweater dress let's see I ordered her some of this like pale pink like this neutral pink color tights so those are going to be coming in the mail so she can wear that with this dress and then her winter coat is like this pink color too so it'll look really cute with her coat but I think that's it I like I said I have the dresses for her they're Christmas dresses that I got from a online boutique called sweet honey clothing I will link that down below as well so you can check them out but these outfits are so cute Oh my god, I cannot wait until you see them. They're so cute, but they're hanging by the washer and dryer, so I'm not gonna go over there and wake her up from her nap so you can see it. You'll just have to wait until we get to Germany, but it's so they're so cute. I got some ear planes for her. This is also going to be Story's first airplane ride or flight, so I don't know how she's gonna do. I hope that she doesn't have any issues with her ears popping or anything like that, but just in case... I got some of these, and if she has an issue, I really hope that these help. Hopefully, we don't need it. <sighs> Other than that, I don't really know what else we need. If you have comments, if you have traveled abroad with a toddler, please leave me a comment below and tell me what saved you, what was like a really, really helpful thing to have, or just tips, like, you know, any kind of advice that you have. I need it. <laughs> I'm stressed already. If you guys couldn't tell, I'm so anxious about this. I'm so excited overall, but flying overseas is a big deal. And then like bringing a toddler with you for the first time. <sighs> I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous, but it's going to be fine. We're going to get there and we're going to have a good time. And I'm so excited. I cannot wait. And I cannot wait to show you guys what we do and take you on our adventures with us. It's going to be great. If this was interesting to you, if you want to hang out with us more, go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you here on the channel. But that's going to do it. I'm going to wrap it up and I'm going to go get Story and we're going to finish our day. We're going to probably wrap some more Christmas presents and get all our packages together so we can get those to the post office tomorrow. Because we have to get all that out before we leave too. Because we won't have time when we come back. <laughs> so... But thanks again. Hope you guys are having a great week. We will see you on the next one.